Hey, good morning. I want to share something with you. And I'm going to use a fake name off of a post in a private group that I manage for restoration professionals. I'm changing the name because everyone wants to feel safe. And I will explain more in a moment about this. I'm reading from the screen. The topic is ethics. Subject line, ethics. How do you file an ethics claim against an adjuster? Is there an insurance board that governs ethics in the industry, or do you have to go directly to the carrier? I have an adjuster with blank insurance company, again, protecting the company, that requested my ESX file on a sewage loss. I shared it with him, as I do with all adjusters that request it. They normally use it for the sketch, but in this case, he wanted all of the line items as well. I sent it to him. A couple of days later, he sent it back to me and said, and I quote, here are the adjustments on the mitigation, end quotes. He actually changed my estimate, changed pricing, removed the line items, sent the PDF with my name still on it, and paid the insured that amount. The difference is $1,550 to give you an understanding of the size. Any suggestions on what I can do? <clears throat> I'll ask you some questions real quick. Um, and by the way, uh, this person is, I believe is a project manager for a medium sized restoration company. I liked how he framed this question. He's relatively new and he's certainly not in a position of leadership at his company. I'm going to make some assumptions here, and we all know how much those can get us in trouble. I assume that he doesn't have the autonomy to do much about it. The company might have a professional stance, which they should. I believe that we all should be extreme professionals. But I also think that we should hold those that we are in coordination with on trying to do our jobs should remain professional. Would you accept this type of behavior from anyone else? A vendor, a customer, a colleague? Then why do we allow this to happen from an insurance company or their representatives that are not under any contractual obligation with us? We are not connected to them, but we are trying to do the same thing as the assumption. Um, I don't know if this has happened to you in some way, shape, or form. I see this from my position all the time. And I think that's a big indicator here is, is this a small issue or a large issue? This is a large issue. This happens probably hundreds of times, if not thousands of times per month. I don't think that the general restoration remediation contractor really understands how many water damages, fires, mold remediation claims for property are filed per month, per year, per quarter. Um, one thing about this that I'm reading, I would like to get everyone's buy-in, is as an industry, as a professional, when will we stop using the word estimate and start calling it an invoice, which is what this was. You have a pricing, a corporate pricing guideline, and I wish it were not an exactimate for this reason right here, this reason. You have your own prices between you and your customer. You present them with your pricing. You honestly try to put together a number on the beginning of what this job is likely to occur incur and then you send an invoice that is not negotiable unless there are errors this is uh this is pretty bad and i don't have a whole lot more to say about this but i want to get your feedback on this on this video in our group whatever you do this can't continue okay um we can't allow this to happen anymore it's gone on too long and too long and they are not stopping and uh, it's unprofessional, and what would happen if you did something like this to your customer?
I think you know the answer, right? All right. Let me know what you're going to do about this in your market. And if you don't know, that's an even better question or better conversation. Thanks.